Here's part two, how to build your Nintendo Switch Latte Panda Alpha build. Hey everyone, this is Project SPC, and if you saw my last video, you would have seen this little portable gaming setup in action. And if you didn't, I will leave a link to it in the description below. So today I'm going to show you how to build it, starting with the 3D printed parts and working our way up. I'll leave a list of the parts you'll need in the description below. So in doing the final assembly video, I realized there was a little bit of an interference issue. The M3 nut holder here interferes with the M.2 um, connector. And right before I released the files, I made the walls a little bit thicker to prevent any breaking. And it looks like there's some interference. So I will send out a corrected file and I will do a better job in the future of validating my designs. I apologize for any inconvenience this may cause you guys. Here are the two parts you will need. There's a lid and a base. Please print both with supports. The top one has supports for the columns here on the underside and the base has supports for the um, mounts and the inputs for the Latte Panda Alpha. Now this is out of PLA. I've had some success with PLA. There hasn't been much warping, but I do suggest you use ABS or PET G to prevent warping. Let's go ahead and remove these supports like I've done here. To get these supports out, you're going to need to be patient and take your time. Don't ruin your case rushing to try and get these supports out. These are the tools that I've used to help get these out, and so far it's worked for me. Tweezers, flathead screwdriver, and some wire cutters. Let's go over the wiring of the USB sound card and power button. And I took a bunch of female um, adapter breadboard pin connectors here. And I took a blue, green, white, two blacks, and one red. And I trimmed them at the following lengths. From the top of the casing all the way to the end of the wire, we have 185 millimeters, 170, 170, 70, 50, and 50. The blue ones for the power button, green and white are for the data lines on the USB, black one for the power button, and the red and black down here for the USB connection. After I got done trimming them, I inserted a right angle adapter piece from my little selection over here into the ends on the female side. When you get the USB sound card, it is gonna look like this one right here. We're gonna wanna look like this in the end. I actually stole this sound card from a Minty Pie project, which is a Raspberry Pi Zero W in an Altoids can. And I'm going to recommend that you follow that tutorial on prepping the sound card. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Basically, you're going to remove the USB connector, the headphone jack adapter, and you're going to jumper two of these pads together like that. So go follow that tutorial and come back when you've got that set up. First, we're going to solder the speaker to the sound card here, and you're going to need about 40 or 50 millimeters of wire between the sound card and the speaker. Now we're going to solder on the pin headers to the USB connection. After you're done soldering the USB, come and make sure you don't have any shorts between pins. Next, we're going to wire up the power button. Next, we're going to install the power button and it can help to remove these little feet that are on the bottom of the power button. For those of you who want to use it as a Nintendo Switch, 
grab these metal brackets from your Joy-Con accessory that came with your Nintendo Switch. Slide them in the rail, and you're just going to muscle in the screws into the plastic. Now that we have everything wired up, we're going to secure this to the lid. So get your speaker, your sound card, and a hot glue gun. And we're going to carefully secure this to the lid. I'm also going to use the hot glue to give some support to these wires here because they are a little fragile. Let's go over the final assembly. You've got to have your battery pack, lid, base, and latte panda alpha with the touchscreen already installed, ready to go. I'm going to take the base and I'm going to bring it over the latte panda alpha and I'm going to guide it up through the hole. And before I put this into its final resting place, I am going to take my M3 nuts and I'm going to insert them in the slots below. If you want, you can use some glue to um, hold it in place a little bit. Just make sure it lines up with the bowl as it comes through the hole. Now I'm using the four hole variant on the top for the lid and I may make that available for you guys if you so choose. Now that we got the M3 hardware installed, we're going to install the Latte Panda Alpha. Just make sure you line up the audio jack here with this appropriate hole. And once that's in place, we're going to take our blue wire for our power button and we're going to route it along. We're going to install it in the second slot on the interim row. It's labeled SW. And then do the best that you can to route the wire around the board like I'm going to take my black wire and I'm going to hook it up to a ground point somewhere over on this part of the board. Next I'm going to get my lid in position and we're going to hook up the wires on here. So I've got my green wire here. I'm going to install it on the USB header over here. I'm going to install that on the D+. I'm going to install my white one on the D-. I'm going to grab my 5 volt and my ground and I'm going to find the 5 volt pin right here next to the um, RTC battery and I'm going to install those as well. Next I'm going to get my lid in position and we're going to get ready to install the bolts. Now I haven't removed the adhesive from the back of the touch screen. That's because we're actually going to put the battery pack in from that side. If a nut does come loose during this process, you can always open up the touch screen from the bottom and fix it from this side. Next we're going to take the screen off and it may be a good idea to prop it up against something or if you can just get it out of the way for the time being. We're going to take, a, take our LiPo battery pack and we're going to carefully insert it into the Once you got the LiPo battery pack installed, we're going to get the LiPo battery connector ready to go. The way I always remember it is the red wires on this connector need to stay away from this IC. So that is the orientation it needs to go. Once that's installed, you can take your adhesive off and you can put your touch screen on. You can install the LiPo battery pack from the other way, it's just a little bit more difficult to get everything lined up. And there you have it, how to build the Nintendo Switch Latte Panda Alpha project. In the next video, I will be showing you how to pair the Joy-Cons to the Latte Panda Alpha, and I'll be releasing that in the next couple days. If you have any questions, 
please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, maybe even subscribe, and thanks for watching.